Hey, Ed, what are you doing over there? Hey, Mitch, uh, I'm just playing Pac-Man. How are you? Pac-Man? Oh, for yeah. God's sakes, Ed, that thing came out like 42 years ago. Yeah, it's, a, it's my favorite game. It's awesome. We should do a show about it. Really? That old thing? Who plays hey, Pac-Man? Hey, 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 don't diss Pac-Man. You know, bad things will happen. Oh, like what? Uh, like this? <laughs> Let's just start the show. Hi, this is Ed Dollister. And this is pinball wizard Mitch Halleck. And welcome to another exciting episode of Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. If it's your first time here, thanks so much for joining us. If you are a regular viewer, welcome back. If you do want to find out a little bit more about the show and uh, help us out a bit, what can you do, Mitch? Oh, Ed, that's easy. All you have to do is be a subscriber to the Mitch and Ed Excellent Adventure. And you do that, it's as easy as slipping a quarter in a slot and your favorite arcade. Just hit the subscribe button and you'll be subscribed to our channel. We thank you and hit the notification bell and you'll know when we go on our next excellent adventure and why not hit like just for the hell of it. Where are we going today, Ed? We're heading back to the arcades to uh, the early 80s. Um, actually 1980, but um, you know, it didn't really take off until you know, like 1982, hence my um, mm. ET uh, baseball cap today, where that was also huge in cinemas at the time. We're going back and looking at Pac-Man. Pac-Man was a phenomenon and um, it was uh, an unexpected phenomenon by, mm. I suppose, by the creator Toru Uatani, who uh, worked at Namco. At the mm. um, time, Space Invaders was huge in 1978 when that really was... Uh, the uh, arcade game that, um, yeah, you know, was the largest the selling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was everywhere. It was packed into the Atari 2600. Uh, there was a single in Australia, Space Invaders by Player One, which was um, a top 10 wow. hit, um, which I've got the single of, um, which was great. And like, it was huge. But uh, Toru Uatani, basically, who was working for Namco, they were developing Galaxian at the time, which is sort of a similar Space Invaders uh, game. He was sort of going, well, you know what? Guys like video games. I want a game that, uh, you know, young people and girls can also play. So we were starting to create a more fam, not a family friendly game, but I suppose a game that was a bit more appealing to all ages. They were developing a new um a uh, method where they could display uh, sprites with multiple colors. And you'll see that in Galaxian when they were doing that. Mm -hmm. So they could do the colorful colors and everything like that. And uh, that's where Pac-Man sort of was created. Did you play Pac-Man in the arcades? Oh, I did. I was a big uh, after school roll of quarters arcade nut. Uh, Space Invaders. Then it was Asteroids was huh? the big the game to do. And then I remember when Pac-Man started showing up at the arcade and my friend Al was all into it. And I was like, yeah, I don't know about this Pac-Man thing with this little yellow dot and you got to eat these things. And what's up with those ghosts? But it took off. I remember every place had a, a Pac-Man machine, the pizza restaurants, the, the, the pharmacies had them, the arcades, everywhere you went, the pool halls, everybody had a Pac-Man and those Ghosts became like instantaneous pop culture hits. You say 82. I'm going to say like 81 because I remember going to see Raiders of the Lost Ark and Superman 2 that summer. And in the movie theaters, they had an arcade machine. And I remember everybody was playing Pac-Man. And not only that, there was books about how to beat Pac-Man. And I have one somewhere here. It's a paperback. Yeah. yeah. Well, mine was a little paperback. And what it did, it had all the patterns. And you yes. would read it and it would say like, go to the left, go up and down and wait for the ghost to go by you, then go up around. And it would tell you how to clear each screen because that was the big deal. It was, a I think the cherry screen was the first one. And then you'd have like strawberries and oranges. And every time you cleared another screen of Pac-Man mazes, you'd have a new fruit. And then after about five or six of them, they'd have these little cartoon intermissions to give yourself yep, little a rest cut scenes. Your, little cutscenes, exactly and those were actually fun i remember just watching guys that were really good at it and i'd sit behind them just to wait for the cutscenes because it was like oh like a bonus feature that we have nowadays uh 
you know, in the world of DVDs and Blu-rays. But there was uh, the ghost would go down the screen chasing Pac-Man, and then they'd come back freaking out, and there'd be a giant Pac-Man with that waka 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 waka. Long before Fozzie Bear, I think, was doing that. And uh, yeah, that's my memories of Pac-Man. And then we had a song here. You might have had a Space Invader song. But did Pac-Man Fever break the top 10 charts over in Australia? Well, I know that it reached number nine by Buckner and Garcia. I've got their album, Pac-Man Fever. That's both uh, the album and the single sold over a million copies. Yeah. And I play that regularly. I quite like it. I don't think we're going to be able to play any of it now because no. of uh, the content matching. Well, I think I can hum the lyrics. Pac-Man okay. yeah. Fever. Or that's actually Cat Scratch Fever. I kind of just. That's right. It's driving me crazy. crazy. Yeah. And it is, anyway. that is a great earworm. It was huge. So that came out in 1982. So yeah. let's just backtrack a little bit. Originally uh, in um, Japan, it was uh, the name of it. I, I won't, I won't, uh, I won't, I won't pronounce it because I won't be able to do it justice. But basically right. in Japanese, it was an onomatopoeia, which basically was the, the sound that you made um, mimicked what it was doing. So it was actually, yeah. The name of the game was essentially like open, closed mouth, open, closed mouth. Oh, it was. Oh, OK. So See, um, I, thought it, I, I was going to say, I thought it looked like a game called Maze Craze, which was like an Atari 2600 game where you just basically had to go through a maze and stuff. And then, you know, they added the ghost chasing after you too. So it was kind of a it, as much as it was an original game, it was kind of like a hybrid of some other games that were out there, you know? So I think it did take a little bit of inspiration from Maze Craze. Um, so it was it, the actual, it, also the inspiration of Pac-Man itself was a pizza with um, a slice taken out of it. Oh yeah, no, I could see that. Yeah. Which yeah. is where he got that. And originally it was going to be called Puck-Man because it was like, uh, uh, that that was the name of it in uh, when they were going to bring it over. However, um, they decided to change it from Puckman to Pac-Man because uh, they felt with Puckman it was very easy for people to graffiti it um, with an F in front of it. Oh, um, oh. To, uh, stop it being, uh, let's say. Uh, oh, I didn't know. More adult. Yeah, yes. I can see that. I didn't know that. Do you know why the uh, ghosts were called Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Clyde? What yes. was up with that? So basically they were um they were originally all going to be the same color and um Iwatani who said no I think we should make these um individual colors and give them um some personality and essentially what he did is there's a little bit of um a bit of a, a very early AI in those in that they are different enemies it's not just the same thing yeah. everything like yeah, that no, so Blinky not. Blinky was shadow um, Pinky was speedy, it was really fast. Inky was bashful, which moved around, and Clyde yeah. um, was pokey or the, the dumb kind one. So dumb. they yeah. all have their individual personalities as well. And um, and as you said, you know, they became Pac-Man and the ghosts became such an iconic part of um yeah. video game law and shirts, everything, merchandise. Pop, pop I had culture. a yeah, I had a cor a, a cork board, like a bulletin board in my room that had Pac-Man on it and such. I remember there was t-shirts and all there that. Stuff. There was plush uh, toys, hats. which I had some um, hats. You mentioned about oh, badges. There were a lot. Badges, um, yeah. You mentioned yeah. about um, the, the magazines. I remember having a few of those. Oh yeah. There were video um, game monthly. Uh, it was yeah, like uh, with the Rubik's cube, Rubik's cube. When that came out, there were a lot of books about how to, um, how to, to solve, solve the Rubik's the puzzle. cube. Yep. Yeah. So um, there was that. Um, you know, you always ask me, well, did it have a board game and did it have a it? Um, lunchbox? Lunchbox? Yes, it did. Really? And I'll put it Why? up now. Why would you have a, a board game on a video game? What was the well, point? Well, you of had that? board games for other. There was Mario um board games. Yeah, but like later that. later on, yeah. I mean, that, that's when they started merchandising the characters like Donkey Kong and yeah, but I mean. What did you do? What was the object of the game? It was so like you the had same um, a board game and you had a plastic Pac-Man and pellets and you would move that as you'd roll and go across. Really? Yeah. There were trading oh. cards as well, which also came with uh, three cards and three stickers. Um, there was also a pinball machine that came out in 83, 82, 83. I never saw a pinball yeah, machine. Yeah, which sort of was an interesting one because it had was a traditional pinball and then it had sort of a maze at the... Oh, wait, no, you're right. 
did it have like another uh, video screen inside the pinball that it you was either inside it or it was on the back glass it was an interesting design yeah. i'll put a picture up of it um to uh Ooh. show you yeah i vaguely remember i'll tell you one thing i remember restaurants getting into tabletop versions of pac-man because i played the arcade cabinet that big yellow classic arcade cabinet but then when Ms. Pac-Man came out, which is a couple years later, I think that's 83, maybe. Yeah, 82? I think it was around uh, 82, 83. It was, yeah, it was that still super popular. popular. Yeah, suddenly in restaurants and bars, you know, I was too young for bars, but you would see them in the distance. The People would sit at the uh, the table. They were called cocktail, cocktail yeah. cabinets. And they'd play Pac-Man or Ms. Pac-Man looking down, too. Honestly, Ms. Pac-Man for some reason, even though the premise is the same, I enjoyed that one more than Pac-Man because Ms. Pac-Man changed the maze up every couple screens. They had a little variation of it. And uh, obviously the character was a female and had lashes and uh, I think a bow in her bow, hair. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked that one a lot more well, than was, I did. There were so many iterations. There was um, Pac and Pal, which came out in 83. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pac Land, I think was Pac Land. They went from uh, 2D maze to 3D. They had there was, yeah. an, there was yeah. like an RPG or a platformer. And to this day, they're still making you know variations of Pac Man or bringing out classic versions on. Oh, you know, yeah. The By the time of- folks watch this, I just read that on May 26, 2022, Pac Man Museum comes out and that's going to be available for the you know PlayStation and Xbox. And it's a combination of all the various. Pac-Man games that have come out in the last literally 42 years now. I'll tell you one thing here, Pac-Man fever got so much. You talk about the uh, board game. You talk about the lunchbox. It had its own TV show. It had a cartoon show with Marty Ingalls. And I don't know if you know, Marty Ingalls. I know the name. He was the husband of Shirley Jones, AKA mother Partridge, but Marty was a voiceover guy here in the States and he would do a lot of cartoons and a lot of commercials, but he was the voice of Pac-Man and he had a wife. I think her name was Pepper Pac. They, you know, she had a, suddenly a, a first name and then they had Pac baby, which was their kid. And they had a dog and the dog's name was chomp. Like, like, ow, because he would go around eating. Not, uh, uh, not chumps with uh, Wesley. You no, that's another movie. No, no, no. Uh, and then they, uh, they would go around eating power pellets and they would turn into like super Pac-Man and the ghosts were the bad guys, obviously. And that ran for like two years, like 45 episodes or 44 episodes. They even had a Halloween special, like tr- pack or treat or something like that. Or it I was, don't know. It it was weird. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Sorry. Pac- he met Pacula instead of Dracula. He met Pacula, which was like a blood sucking pac-man oh that, wouldn't it have been like, good if it was scott pacula no, well oh, yeah. that's bacula then, sorry bacula and then and then they had a christmas special where he actually met santa claus you know and god knows if the pac-man craze did not die out pretty soon he would be in a delorean going pack to the future let's uh let's pack this uh episode up i think but before we say that up to well, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. before we cut out to that how long did pac-man fever reign in australia because here it kind of went throughout the 80s but i'll tell you one of the saddest days is when i got the atari 2600 version of pac-man and my friends and i we were in high school we were counting down the day when they were going to release that and it came out on a tuesday and yep. my mom bought it at Sears, which is like the big department store. We pre-ordered it. I think it was like 40 bucks. And you put that cartridge in your 2600 and you were instantaneously disappointed because they screwed it up. You don't know how, but they screwed up Pac-Man. I mean, the premise was there. The look was kind of there, but the 8-bit graphics were not the same thing as the arcade. And even the sound, that waka, 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 that you heard at the arcade they didn't even get that right you know even that 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 classic when he would get eaten and that everything was missing yeah it was it was a pretty poor port however having said that thanks to you and your friends uh it was the um highest selling cartridge on the atari system the i believe uh, 
the number one video game of all time too it is it is um i remember um looking in the they had a the tate's toy shop in uh Karaya village in geelong they had a um uh a glass cabinet where they had all the um like expensive toys and video games and they had the coleco tabletop right um arcade that yes. sold over that was too expensive that was like 130 dollars oh no really uh wow. yeah it, it it was um that sold over a million copies wow um, I was going to say, well, I was going to say real quick, you mentioned Coleco. There were like knockoffs. Yes. Everybody was trying to be Pac-Man. There was a game called Ladybug, which was on the Coleco vision. Basically, it's Pac-Man. You went around as a ladybug and you ate like flowers and, 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 and you know, plants and you were chased around too. It was exactly the same, except the maze was different, the graphics, but Ladybug was actually a pretty fun version of Pac-Man. Yeah, you there know? definitely were a lot of... Um a lot of knockoffs uh, around, you know, I think for anything space invaders yeah, um, yeah uh, and all yeah. that sort of stuff. Um, you were saying, yeah, it's the most popular video game of all time or most successful. Um, it yeah. certainly is. As of 2016, it had made about $14 billion. Um, Billion. Yep. That's a lot of quarters, man. And uh, in, in uh, 19, it's, I think in 1981 when it started to because it was a bit of a slow burn they never yeah. expected it to be you know so popular in 1980 it was successful 81 it um it outgrossed Star Wars already no way yeah. really yeah oh my god I didn't know it was that because big. when you think about it you know people are pumping in you know for us it was yeah, 20 quarters, cents. dollars it was, yeah. it was 20 cent piece um you yeah, know for you a quarter 25 cents you know you play a game. I remember doing entering a Pac-Man competition. Really? Uh, they had one at Coles at the Coles department store. So I go, okay, there was the cabinet. I went in, I, I died in like 30 seconds. You know, it was horrendous. I wasn't very good at Pac-Man. Yeah. But uh, you know, if you think about that, you know, putting in, pumping in, pumping in, you know, you're paying how much was a movie ticket back in 1981? Oh, about four fifty. You know, something like that. Cents. So yeah. 250 450 something you're burning like that. through that in maybe you know an oh, hour or two yeah, yeah, if, yeah, that, yeah. if that yeah. so um I'll, I'll tell you what though it's been what 42 years since pac-man came out but he still is around i remember when we saw that adam sandler movie yeah that came out a couple years ago it was Pixels. about video games it had kevin james in it and there was an actor who played the japanese inventor of pac-man and they had this, you know, CGI version of Pac-Man and it ate him. Yep. It was like, what happened there? You know, I was like, that was kind of, a, you know, dark humor. He there. was actually um, in it. Uh, Toru Otani was in it as a technician at the very start. Oh, um, oh, the real one. Yeah. But yeah. I think the the problem with um, that Pixels, it was it was a, because Pixels, it was an Adam yes. Sandler film. It yeah. Should, it had a good premise. It was it actually did. based we, on we a short looking, film, yeah. if I recall. Um, the and trailer then, course, was really cool. Yeah, we were looking yeah, forward yeah. to it. And then when we saw the movie, we were like, huh? Yeah. I don't know. But and yet, one still, other, yeah. Well, I was going to say one other big screen appearance that was more successful for Pac-Man oh, comes Tron? in. No, he was well, in Tron. okay, go ahead and Tron. He has a cameo in Tron. He has a cameo in Tron in one of the walls where I think it's Sark is there. You can see a little Pac-Man. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, in the background. So yeah. but continue on. His other big screen is in a billion dollar movie is in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, where Peter Quill, a.k.a. Star-Lord, now that he has the power of like the Celestials, at the end of the movie, he fights his father, Ego, the living planet, and he can turn into whatever he wants. And what does he turn into? But a giant pac ball or Pac-Man ball. And he comes flying at Ego and boom. But it makes the noise as it goes across that squeaky, rubbery, squeak, 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 yep. squeak, 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 whatever that noise. What was that noise? Waka, waka, waka. Technically, I mean, you did say earlier about, you know, Fozzie Bear. That was, Fozzie Bear was in 1976. So he was. Okay. He was, okay. It so, sounded like it, that waka, yeah. waka, 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 waka. waka. But I'm, I'm sure it wasn't. Anyway. So. Pac-Man anyway. has got an endearing legacy. Namco are now, um, I think it's Bandai Namco. Bandai um, Namco, yeah. na um, But uh, Pac-Man's like their official, you know. Um, oh, their logo. Yeah. You know, yeah. for, uh, for it. And um, 
there today still um arcade one up um are uh, bringing up uh they bring out those uh three oh those home arcade here's um, a little uh, here's a little bit of trivia for you yep my gaming show ct gamer con that i do here in connecticut every march the new logo is the pac-man c when you look at gamer con ah. when i do the c for con i use the pac-man round circle with the open spot for the c i'll show you the logo now so that's it looking at pac-man it's a classic if you can get one of those arcade one up uh you know tables they're great this one's like a just a desktop one is really good fun it comes with a number of games so you can still get it you can still buy you know the large scale ones um from arcade one up or you can get a restored cabinet how cool would that be um, because really, really cool. it would look i know it would look great in my room if i know was, oh, if was I, want room. A, I want an arcade machine so bad oh yeah well pinball pin, a pinball yeah. machine is next on my list but uh Lucky. i know fingers crossed we'll we'll talk about that at a later date mitch if you want to find out a little bit more about um some of our other shows what can you do oh and it's as easy as chomping a bunch of power pellets and running away from a bunch of ghosts all you do is hit the subscribe button down there and you'll be subscribed to Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. Hit the notification. You'll know when we go on another one. And hit the like button because we like you and you should like us. But that that's would, it. That would be great. So, and also, if you've got a, um, an idea for a show or a topic, please let us know in the comments below. Well, that's it for another exciting episode of Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. This is Ed Dollister. And this is Pac-Man Mitch. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.